Herschel, first of all, it's very nice to have you back in Dallas. Good to see you. It's great to see you again, Bobby. This is the fourth time, I guess, as you well know, that Fiddler on the Roof had been. Do you know that I haven't the faintest idea? I have not thought about it at all. It's, uh, I did not, and am not thinking of audiences. I'm thinking of the play. And one of the reasons that I'm back is that when Tom and I spoke about this particular season, and he mentioned Fiddler again, I remembered that there were so many things I wanted to do the last time which I did not do, and it's so easy to freeze into a play and get frozen stuck in, in a certain character. And this time, we promised each other that we'd, we'd tear it apart and look at it again fresh. And we're doing that now, and it's very exciting. And that's the offer he gave me that I couldn't refuse. Herschel, could you give me an example of what you mean? Because I saw your performance, and it was really a beautiful performance. I don't know what more you need to do to it. It's not a question of more, and it's not a question of needing. It's a question of desire. It's a question of we're all... You know that one day is never the same as the next, okay? It's the same with plays. The plays, even performances, are never the same, meaning one night after the other. You do eight performances a week? Do we do eight here? I think eight. Eight performances a week. One night is different from another. Sometime uh, one person will go to a, a performance and you can be above a certain level. You never go below a certain level of performance. But there are nights when you transcend. Mm -hmm. And there are nights when you just do the show as is expected of you. You try not to go below that. That's, that's being professional. But other than that, there are there are heights that you don't you don't know. How can you know how high you can go? If you don't know, th if you knew that, there wouldn't be any fun. Mm -hmm. The fun is the challenge of constantly, uh, Paul Muni used to say that. He always said, mm -hmm. he said, what are you, why are you frowning all the time? And he used to think about it. He says, I want to be better. Mm -hmm. And that was lovely. He, he, you don't have to frown about it. You can, with, with a lot of gusto and a lot of enjoyment and lust mm -hmm. for life. <laughs> Herschel, most actors who have done a role as much as you've done, Tavia, do you know how many performances you've done? Uh, somebody asked me previously, uh, is close to a thousand times, almost 900 something times. All right, let's say close to a thousand performances of Tevya. Yet you come in here and you're doing two weeks of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. That's quite unusual. Because of what I just said to you. Tear it apart, open it up, and look at it again. And it's such an exciting to look at it, something that you've done so many times, and come up with new things. Not that going to see or even notice that they might, and if they do, fine. It, it doesn't matter. It's for yourself, and it brings a new joy to it, a new verve. I've already discovered some funny and wonderful things happen. Some more laughs? Well, it, not only laughs, more it laughs, absolutely, but the, the, there are moments now that, are, that make more sense for some reason, and maybe it comes to my own nature. Yeah, five years is five years. I've begun to get more insight into myself and therefore more insight into Tevye. You know, it's like anything else. Some of the previous people who've been associated with the role of Tevye, Fiddler on the Roof, well, Zero Mostel, who created it, Joseph Cusinelli, who's played it here, Paul Levin, who's played it here. Oh, of course, yes. yes. They're all men, they're portly men, men of, and you, you are not, you're a human. Does that affect your interpretation in any way at all, Herschel? Uh, first of all, I, well, I have two things to say on that. One is, when I saw it in New York, before I took over the part, I saw two people. I saw Ciro do it in the be very beginning. And I saw Luther Adler do it, who was a trim man at that time. He's, he's much bigger now, but he was a trim man. To begin to go back into your own roots and see who you really are. Because I, I have a kind of a half-baked theory about it rubber bands and no matter how much we stretch to adjust other kinds of living in an emotional crisis we go right back to our original position you know we go doing, 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 you know that feeling and I know we do we all do. how do you feel about the Soviet dissident trials that are going on now I feel terrible about it I think the, I think we need uh, we need it's the kind of injustice that uh, is rampant in the world today and it's part of it's part of injustice I mean, it's the only reason I more is because I am Jewish. And being Jewish, you relate to it because being a Jew or having that identification of knowing the history, the uh, astoundingly bad press for, what, 100 years, and that kind of background, 
your your antenna is out uh, for that kind of injustice and being a Jew therefore my antenna are out so that affects me first therefore let's say uh, as opposed to the opera or uh, Iceland or something that happens somewhere else something that happening to a Jew somewhere affects me first before something else and even though I consider myself a humanitarian a universalist so, so to speak uh, there is that and that's what I meant when I said uh, growing older I begin much more to be, my antenna are much more out about myself. Does that answer that question? Herschel, as an American, as a Jew, can you ever uh, try to see or can you even envision the Aryan point of view at all on any given subject? Absolutely. Oh, there, there's no <laughs> yeah, I have certain political opinions, okay. Uh, and I'm not sure I want to go into political opinions. The feeling that I have when when people people need a place to live, Jews need a place to live, they should and live together, not necessarily together this way, together that way. Anyway, it doesn't matter as long as they live. So my position on it is one of uh, shalom, which means peace. Just and I think. Uh, our government is trying to do, and I hope what the Middle East, the, the people, the, the I hate the call because you lump a whole bunch of people who of different ethnic origins, different positions, different opinions into one lump. And it's not fair. I think the South, and I think uh, the Saudi Arabia, and I think uh, Libya, uh, totally different, represent totally different causes. Yes, Arafat is a totally different animal from, uh, let us say, Hussein. There are different people. So you can't lump them together that way. They're different, and they should be dealt with differently, as people are, as all people. Does that answer that question? I have a lot of, you know. Herschel, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much for this visit, and the best of luck to you and the on the roof. Thank you. I don't know, I'm your age. I have all my faculties. I get up in the morning, I go to the kitchen, I have breakfast, I go out to the store, I buy food, and thank God.